Now, since we're going to use this pagination in multiple places, it's always a good idea to make reusable code. And since this is object-oriented programming, we just have to make a class. So we will need to move all this to a class variable. Let me just push this inward like this. Okay, so what I'll do is let me go to my models. This is where we add all the new cool stuff. So I'll right click and say new file. So this new file I will save as let's call it pager pager.php capital P, right? And let's put some PHP tags. Let's add a class. Okay, so uh, we'll call it the pagination class. Okay, so this should match the file name, so pager. So class pager, it doesn't extend any class at all. And we need the constructor in this one. And what we will get here is the limit. Now let's make it optional by adding a, uh, an optional value of 10 like this. That will make it optional. Very good. So we have our constructor here, which will uh, create everything we need the moment we initialize this. And we need another function here. So this will be a, all these are public functions, by the way. So public function, um, I'll need uh, show. I think I'll just call it show like this, or you can call it display. Uh, let's call it display. It's more sophisticated language. So display, yes, to display the page, the page, the page numbers. So I will cut all this here from there and add it in the show right here, like so. Now, I don't want to use echo because I don't want to lose the, um, this HTML stuff. So what I would do instead is let me close the PHP tags over here and open them up again at about here. Okay, so this remains as um, as PHP as HTML, sorry, but it will not show until I run this function right there. Okay, cool. Now that we have that, let's make that public as well. Public function construct. Good. So now this constructor runs the moment we initialize the pager. So it's a good opportunity to fill up everything we need. Now we're going to need two things. So here I'm just going to say public. Um, what variable is this going to be? This one will be links. So public links is equal to an empty array. Okay. Let's add another public. Um, public property, which is going to be the offset so that it tells us the offset and the offset will default to zero for the first page. Okay, cool. This is nice. So what I want now is once we initialize this to fill up all the links that we need and give us the correct offset, depending on the page that we are on and the limit we've been given. Now, luckily we have the formulas that we need right over here. So I'm just going to copy all of this, copy so that we uh, remember that we need the offset and limit in the queries here. So we'll need those here as well. So I'll just copy for now. I'll save this here and I'll paste that there. So limit will be equal to that limit we get from there. So no need to show it here. And then page number will be if is set get. So we can get the get variable to know what page we are on right now. So this is all good. And here we're making sure that page number does not go below zero or below one. And then we finally have an offset here, which is equal to whatever this is. Now, instead of saving this offset here, because it won't be very useful, we might as well save it here. So this is why I will use the 
this keyword like this. So this offset, meaning this one right here, will be equal to whatever this evaluates to. So now we have that, and the only thing remaining is the links. So we must create the appropriate links so that we can use them when displaying right here. So how do we uh, create the links? Uh -huh. Now, to create links here, we must know the full, uh, what is this? We must know the full current link in the in here. So, in order to figure that out, uh, here I'll just do an echo first of all. I'll just say echo. Um, let's see here the server. Yeah, let's try and use this server. So server query string. Yes, query underscore string so i want to see what's inside the query string of the server so this is pager all i need to do now is go to the students right about here without disturbing any of this i'm just going to say pager is equal to new pager like that cool so once we do that, if I now refresh, I should see the query string here. And the query string is URL is equal to, and then the students, these, and the page is equal to one, which is exactly what we have in here. I don't know why it removes the question mark though. Hmm. Anyway, not a big deal. What we will do is, uh, instead of echoing out the query string, we're just going to say uh, get URL. So, yeah, the problem is that might not exist. Let's do this, get URL, like that, since we told it to send everything there. So, refresh. Oh, so that's students, but we don't have this other part here. So then I guess query string is better after all. Okay, so query string there. All we need to do is do a string replace because we don't want that uh, URL is equal to part. We replace it with an empty string. And then our subject is this one like so, boom. Okay, cool. And I'll refresh. Okay, so it's saying undefined key query string. Okay, it's not because it's supposed to be in this server like that. Okay, great. Okay, so we get the students is equal to and page is equal to one. But let me try and clear that out and then we get an empty string so we don't get an error which is good so back here there we go okay good so now we have some kind of um, a query string now what i want to do is add root to this whole thing so say root dot like this let me see what i get so if i now refresh so i get root and then i get school now I need another slash here before the end. So I'll just concatenate a slash real quick, like so. So back here. All right. So what I'm trying to do is recreate my current URL here. That's what I want to do. So pages go to one, students, public. So yeah, this looks like the URL I have in there. So if I copy this and paste it there, I still come back to this page so which means this is the correct url so now that i have the url all i need to do is check if it's got page is equal to right if it has page is equal to then i'll replace this right here so we're going to use a regular expression to find this kind of thing so back here 
Let me go and create a new page just for testing regular expressions. So I want to be able to replace page is equal to one, regardless where it is. So let me do find, make sure here down here, the regular expression thingy is ticked, this dot star. And let's use a regular expression, shall we? We're just going to find page is equal to, and then any number from zero to nine here, like that. Okay, and then we'll put a plus to make sure that any length of number will suffice. So if I was page 12, it will get all that, regardless what number it is. If I put letters now, it will not pick that. Okay, cool. So this is nice. This is our regular expression. So what we need to do now is replace all the numbers here with, um, with something. Now, the thing is, it will happen that sometimes the page is not going to be there. And if it isn't, we are supposed to be able to just add it there. But before we hurry to do that, let's just deal with this. So here I'll change this to say current is equal to, so this is the current page is equal to this. So this is the current page now. All I want to do is change it to a specific number. Now, right now we know, um, no, this is not current page. This is current link like so because the current page is the page number. So we have a page number here and I want to know the next link and the previous link. So this is the current link. So what will be uh, the next link? So here, next link is going to be equal to, okay? It's going to be equal to the current link, but then let's just replace something. So in the current link, we'll, re we'll do a preg replace, okay? So the reason we're using preg replace is because we want to use a regular expression to replace things. So I'll do that to create a pattern. And we already created a pattern down here. So I'll cut that pattern and add it there. So we are looking for any pattern written page is equal to plus a number, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, now the thing is, we already know our current page, okay? So that's cool. Once we replace this, what are we replacing it with? We're replacing it with page is equal to, but then we concatenate a number of page number uh, plus one, right? That is what makes gives us uh, the next page like this. So I'm putting this in brackets so that it can evaluate this first and then concatenate it to the page. And then what is the subject? It's the current link. So cut that and add it here, like so. Okay, so I have the current link, I have the next link, but what is the previous link? Mm -hmm. So previous link here, uh, should be should never go to zero because if we we're on page one and we try to do a minus it's going to be a disaster because um, we're going to go to page zero and we don't want to do that so the question is going to be if page number is equal to one, right? We'll do one thing. And then if it isn't, we'll do something else. So let me just copy this next link here, copy. And on the else, this will be prev link. The previous link is equal to, all I have to do is do a minus here, and then we are good to go. The other one though, we're going to just set it to page one, okay, just like that. No need to do any calculation because if it's equal to one, we don't want to go 
to one to minus or to zero. So this is previous link. Good. Okay, great. So we have our current link, we have our next link, we have our previous link. Cool. So what we need now um, is to add these links to this part here. So I'm going to copy here and right about there, I will say this links because we are talking about this property right here. So I want to start adding things here. So the first thing I'll add is the current. So I'm just going to name it current like this. And uh, wait, read, read for it is equal to current link. Copy, paste. And then here I will put the previous. Okay, actually I have to start with the previous. So priv is equal to priv link. And then uh, current, current, and then next, next, like this. And then change that to next, okay? Okay, so we've created um, the previous link, the current link, and the next link. What we need now is a few numbers. Because if you look here, we have a few numbers in between. So we have the previous, we have the current, which is page one maybe, and then we have a few numbers here, and then we have finally the next. So before we add the next, uh, we should add two or three numbers here, right? Actually, we also need a first link. Yes, yes, we do that. We need a first page. So right here, I will, first page is exactly this one right here. Okay, so copy this and let's say, um, let me duplicate this, change current, uh, no, actually not here, let me do this, uh, hold on a second, I want to change this to first, so first is equal to, and then put page one here, like so, like that. Okay, good. So there's the first link here. Um, actually, we don't need previous. We don't. Do we? No, 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 no. We need the first one, and then we need, if this is the first one here, and then this is the center one, we can have a few here on the left and on the right, so we don't need previous, actually. So we just need current link, we need next link, and we need the first link. Yeah, I think that's about it. And let me erase these ones, like this. Okay, cool, cool. Current, next, first. Okay. Now, once we've added all this, what remains is to add these links to this place right here. And once we do that, then we can echo it out. So hopefully this has been understood what we're trying to do here. We just get the current page number, uh, determine the offset, and then all we are doing is getting the root link, the current link to this page, and then we will uh replace the numbers to make the next link and the first link now that we've assigned this here to this links we can use that to do something here so let's do that in the next video